Hello, good morning. This is the Lighthouse Digital Church, where we are taught the word of God which is flawless, have pure wisdom that is from the Lord, and a worship that fosters fellowship. Before the sermon, we will have a moment to review last week's message. Good morning. This is the Lighthouse Digital Church. Last week, our lead pastor, Pastor Davis, taught us on the topic, Would You Remember? And a lesson is drawn from the children of Israel when they crossed the river of Jordan and God told them to pick up 12 stones from the middle of the river and set up as a memorial or remembrance of what he has done for them. So we take a cue from this and learn that we should also keep memorials or a remembrance whenever God gives us the victory. Yes, and the purpose of a memorial is to make us remember that God has and God will always come through for us. We should remember that His power is always the same. And absolutely today we cannot set up stones. So what do we do? How do we keep memorials? We record in our journal or our victory log whenever God gives us the victory. We keep a journal. So yes, God came through for me. So when we are going through a storm in the present, we can go back and say yes, God came through for me in the past and He will always come through for me. Now, here is today's message. Hello, good morning. Good morning. My name is Davis Vamig Boy. I'm so delighted to have you in church this morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God forevermore. Last week, I started a topic I called, Will You Remember? And Will You Remember actually is the beginning of a series of what happened after the Jordan was crossed. So they crossed the Jordan and then we now begin to learn how God wants them to possess the land. So you might consider this series that I started last week as Beyond the Jordan. The series of Beyond the Jordan. What, what happened now? What happens now after we have crossed the Jordan? We cross the Jordan miraculously. Crossing the Jordan is a type of us being able to move from where we were to where God wants us to be. So for example, there's been a picture in your heart of what you have been believing God for. There's been a picture in your heart of what you have believed God for for many years. And all of a sudden, God just did it for you. God took you from here to there. So now you've crossed the Jordan. But you crossed the Jordan by the miraculous power of God. So now that you've crossed the Jordan, God wants to do a number of things as you begin to experience the abundance of God has begun to experience the new life that God has in store for you. The first thing we learned last week was the fact that God wants us to remember. And when we look at the text that we shared last week, we look at Joshua chapter 4, where God said to them that they should pick up 12 stones from within the Jordan, where the feet of the priests stood, that you took 12, you should take 12 stones from there and erect a monument. I started talking about last week about the need for us to have memorials, a monument to commemorate what God has done in our lives. Praise God. So today I will continue in that same spirit to talk about a topic I have titled Forget Not. Or you may call it three things that can make us to forget God. But the key ethos behind the message is the back, back behind the message today is God does not want us to forget about him. Why is that? Because God is the source of our lives. So today I'll, I'll be sharing texts from the Old Testament and the New Covenant to illustrate the reason why it's imperative for you and I not to forget God. Praise God forevermore. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, I thank you for what you are going to do this morning. Thank you for your wonderful people from all over the world, from different countries in which they are tuning in or listening to this. Lord, I thank you that your word will go out freely right now, in, impacting lives and touching people, setting captives free, delivering somebody almighty God from the grip of the enemy, helping us to understand that we have been set free and delivered from the curse of the law, that you are on our side, that you are in us, that you walk actively to make all things work together for our good. That everything that we will ever receive in this life has been completed and done by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you are going to do this morning. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, praise God. Last week, as I said earlier, I preached about a message called, Will You Remember? I believe you may have also seen a clip from our 
uh, media media department talking about just a bit of description about what what that topic really meant if you want to learn more about it please go to the YouTube channel um, or go to our podcast channel as well where you can see the replay there remember if you are not in church at 8 o'clock in where the live service runs you can catch a replay at 10 o'clock on YouTube or on the podcast channel or even on Facebook praise God forevermore all right let's look at Joshua chapter 4 verses 5 to 7 as we re rehash this topic the Bible says and Joshua said to them cross over again to the to the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan and each of you shall take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Israel so that this may be a sign the word sign means a token a sign among you a remembrance among you you know uh, uh, when your children ask later what do these stones mean to you then you shall say to them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when he crossed the Jordan the waters of the Jordan were cut off so these stones shall become a memorial for Israel forever these stones shall become memorials for Israel forever these stones shall become a memorial for Israel forever these stones shall become a memorial for Israel forever yeah the victory log that I asked you to create last week shall become a memorial for you forever you know the, the, the landmarks you've created the milestones you've created in the journey of your life will be a memorial forever so that when your children come to ask you and say daddy or mommy what does this thing mean you will say this thing remind me of the goodness of God of the faithfulness of God or of when God brought me from the dark side to the light side praise God that is the purpose of the memorial so when we remember what God has done for us in the past in light of our present predicament we find that our heart is assured of what that God will come through in that situation there was a post I shared um, earlier in the week uh, I think last week as well no earlier in the week and I said that if God did it before he would do it again if God did it before he would do it again so I, I'm sending a word of comfort a word of encouragement to somebody right now you are right now listening to this and your heart may be overwhelmed you may be thinking will God come through when will, I, when will I get to see the end of this? I bring you a word from the Lord that if God has done it for you before, he will do it again. God is the God who does miracles. God is a God who performs miracles. God is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So which means if he came through for you in the past, he will come through for you in the present and in the future of 5, 10, 15 years or 100 years from now, God will still continue to come through for you. Praise God. Now, there's a scripture I want to use this morning that God laid in my heart to begin to use to encourage you. I don't know whether we're going to be able to finish it today. If we don't, we'll pick it up next week. Is that right? Let's go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I think if you were at the communion service on last Sunday, I used this scripture as well, part of this scripture to pray uh, for this month in terms of the Father God wants us to remember. This scripture, Psalm 103, essentially is talking about remembering the goodness of God. Remembering the goodness of God. So forget not forget not is a topic of today i pray that as you begin to look at this text together with me as we step through it the lord will use this text to encourage you and build faith and hope in your heart psalm 103 verse 1 to 2 uh, in the passion translation it reads with my whole heart with my whole life and with my innermost being i bow in wonder and love before you the holy god Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I forget the miracles of kindness that you have done for me? How could I forget the miracles of kindness that you have done for me? That is the question. How could you forget the miracles of kindness that God has done for you? You might be there right now and say, David, no, God has not really done a lot of miracles in my life. I haven't really seen a lot of kindness in my life. The question I've got to ask you first is, brother or sister, did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up this morning? Do you have clothing on your back? 
can you still breathe does any part of your body still work it might just be one it might be your lung it might be your eyes do they still work all right now if you can answer yes to any of this question just one of this question i've posted to post to you right on this morning then you have something to be grateful for don't you think because when you begin to act and be grateful for the little that you have more will start coming to you two weeks ago i spoke about the power of praise i believe in the, by next week or the week after i'm going to be talking about a topic that, that god laid in my heart in the middle of the night called your miracle is in your praise your miracle is in your praise so please watch out for that message right but two weeks ago i speak i think i spoke about the, the why praise is important and i said when you send the waves of praise out from your life it goes out into the atmosphere and by the laws of attraction or what i call the law of creation like attracts like that wave that you have sent out will come back to you and now we also know that in book of genesis chapter one i believe it's in verse six when god said every seed produces after its kind we learned from that scripture that as a part of the laws of creation that when you plant a seed you are going to get the same seed back and more all right so therefore if you are going to get what you have planted back and more then it means that when you plant the seed of praise you will get things in your life to be to praise god for and more all right so now when i when we're talking about do not forget his benefit. We're saying, remember what God has done for you in the past. Remember what God has done for you in the past. If you are living in a country today where there's, where there's no war outbreak, then you can thank God. When you wake up today, this morning, and you can walk from your bed to your, to your, to your dining room or to your, to your, to even to your you know, convenience, then you have something to be grateful for. When you begin to think about what God has done for you in this context, gratitude will well up in your heart. It was last year, I believe, you know, that I wrote the book called The Gratitude Code. You know, I want you to get it. I think I actually got a copy here, you know, The Gratitude Code. You know, you can go back and you can go on Amazon and buy this book. Why was this book important? This book is so important because it sets gratitude as a way of life. And then when you begin to become grateful to God for what he has done for you, for little things, for little things, I'm not even talking about big things now, for little things, trust me, brothers and sisters, things will begin to come into your life faster than you thought. When we become great, when we make gratitude a way of life, things are going to flow into your life very, very, very quickly. And, I, and a lot of people have t- took actually this gratitude code over a 30 day period and they witnessed a lot of breakthroughs in their lives. In fact, there was a lady that got healed, completely healed of coronavirus. When in those early days, when we didn't, when nobody knew how corona was working, how whether it was going to kill somebody, not kill somebody, people, a lot of people were dying. She got into panic, panic attack and she called me and said, Look, let's start a journey, 30 days journey. Be, just being grateful and after 30, by the 17th day she was completely healed she didn't take any medication you know but she was healed why because she began to just praise god for what she has and you and i we have more than enough things to praise god for so you can go on amazon get it the other thing you can do is i think we have um, a seven day free gra- gratitude course you know if you, if you write to the church we're going to send you a link you can just take the course of seven days you know, period to just help you to build gratitude into your life so gratitude is a way of life that god wants you to cultivate so when the, the psalmist when the psalmist here says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all of his benefits the psalmist is making a profound statement that we can learn from that says bless the lord oh my soul remember here if you look in this scripture in the kjv psalm 103 verses 1 to 2 in the kjv the 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 word here is bless the lord oh my soul it's not talking about bless the lord oh my spirit because your spirit is as perfect and righteous as god is all right so why do we need why did they mention the soul where the soul the soulish realm is a realm of the mind is a realm of the intellect is a realm of reasoning so he's saying is basically instructing his mind or i don't know whether is a he or a she let's just use e you know it makes it easier is is instructing his mind to say mind remember (laughs) bless the lord 
mind remember bless the lord and that is what i'm saying to you this morning will you bless the lord will you pronounce blessing out of your mouth will you proclaim his name will you lift up his name will you extol his name will you make his name great in, great in your life praise god by just expounding on the goodness of god bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name which means it's talking about a a, a, a blessing that comes from the inside out uh, 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 an eulogy to God that comes from the inside out a praise that flows from the inside out that is what this guy is talking about he says that is what you should do and then he then goes into verse 2 and says bless the Lord again O my soul <laughs> I'm saying praise the Lord again O my soul but now don't forget all of his benefits don't forget all of his benefits praise God now I want to show you something that God showed me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 10 to 12 on how the children of Israel were also instructed, you know, not to forget the benefits of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 10 to 12. Let us read it. The Bible said, Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he so solemnly promised to give you, to give your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with great and splendid cities, with which you did not build and houses full of all good things which you did not feel and hewn excavated cisterns or wells which you did not dig out and vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant and you eat and are full and satisfied then beware that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of Israel now if you look at this text in the light of the new covenant there are a couple of things that i want to call out quickly before i delve deep dig deep into the conversation it's talking about god made a promise to abraham and that when when god has brought them into this land into this land flowing with milk and honey into this land which where there's much more than enough in this land where there's abundance is now saying to them do not forget the lord who brought you out of the land of egypt the land of slavery if you look at this in light of the new covenant you could say after god has brought you out from death to life and he has brought you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son don't forget that god not only brought you out to save you from death he also brought you out to enjoy the good things of life john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus christ said i am come that they may have life and have that life to the full he's saying that his mission statement why he came is that you should have the life the life of god the zohe life of god the uncreated life of god but not not that enough he wants you to have that life to the full or that life overflows and touches others that's the mission statement of jesus he wants you to have such life okay but the thing is he brought you from darkness to light first then he wants you to enjoy the benefits of this new life and the benefit of this new life is that you get to enjoy some things that you did not work for the blessings of, of god in your life if it can be measured by your actions then you haven't encountered god if the things you enjoy in your life today you can attribute those things to your actions and your effort and what you have done and people that you have known then you haven't encountered the grace of god yet god is going to bring some things into your life that you didn't work for he's going to bring some things into your life that you didn't have to struggle for you know this is not about laziness no you know what god does not bless zero you know you have to have something that you are putting in your you're working with your hands but the bible says the blessing of the lord make it rich and has no sorrow which means the blessing that god puts upon your life will make you to become rich rich not it's just it's not just about being having money rich is about the the the, the quality of life that you are going to enjoy and that quality of life will not have sorrow in it praise god so how can we forget the Lord God says do not forget that I brought you out of the land of Egypt do not forget me do also do not forget what I have done for you how can we forget the Lord I will present three things to you this morning that could serve as avenues or channels through which we could forget the Lord even under the new covenant the first one deals with our past the first one deals with our past the first one deals with our past how could we forget the Lord when we talk about the past? Well, when we look back over our lives and we think about our successes, what we've achieved in this life, and we think that those things were brought about by our own efforts, 
when we look at, at our past and say, wow, look at what I have achieved here by my own strength and power, we are forgetting God as our source. Okay, number two, how can we forget God in the present moment? Well, we can forget God in the present moment whilst when we are going through the challenges of life or things that may be going through our lives now, our mouths are filled with complaints. We complain, we complain, we complain, we complain, we grumble and grumble and grumble. When we grumble and complain, we are spending that time, more time then, complaining about the things in our lives instead of spending more time pronouncing blessing out of our mouth and praising God for what he has done. So we forget God when we live our lives in complaints. Number three, the future. How can we forget God as we look to the future? We can forget God as we look to the future when we don't consult him or seek his counsel before we do anything that he has asked us to do. If God has asked you to go in this direction, seek his counsel. Get guidance from the one who has been assigned to you. Get guidance from the Holy Spirit, your, your paracletos, the one who is your comforter. Get guidance from him. Don't just go around, run around stuff by yourself. Those, those are the three things that God laid in my heart on how we can forget him. The past, the present, the future. The past, don't focus on your success and say, I did this by myself. The present, don't complain while you're going through the challenges. Don't say, oh, things are going down. Don't use your mouth to, to curse yourself. Okay, number three, seek God out. Seek God out when you start a new enterprise. So what I want to do now over the next 20 minutes is then step through each one of this topic and expand them. Praise God. How can we forget the Lord based on the past? The answer is in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 18. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 18, the Bible read, says, and I read, beware that, you do not, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. How? By failing to keep his commandment and his judgment, his precepts, his statutes. Essentially, don't forget the Lord by not spending time to read his word. Spending time to understand what his word says about any situation you're going through and living your life by the word. Okay, and, and then it says, and it's statues, I'll continue statues, which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied, may you eat and be satisfied in the name of Jesus. When you are eaten, you have, you have eaten and you're satisfied and have built good houses and lived in them. May you have good houses to live in, in the name of Jesus. That is part of the inheritance that you have come, you have been called into as a child of God. Good houses that you have not built and you are living in them. You have built houses, good houses, and you lived in them. And when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply, it's talking about your resources, your financial resources, the things that you have to bless other people with when these things have multiplied, right? And all that you and and all that you have increases. May everything you have, every good thing you have in your life today receive the increase of God in the name of Jesus. May the God of abundance May the God of abundance flow into your life more increase than you've ever known. I pray for you this morning that right from this day, as you begin to put God into remembrance, as you begin to embrace the word that's been shared with you, your life will begin to experience the super abundance of God in ways that you've never known in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, what the eyes have not seen, what the ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of men are the things which God has prepared for you. Yes, God has prepared for you and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, think or imagine according to that same power as at work in you. So, People of God, I'm saying to you, no matter what it is that you believe in God for, I pray for you that you haven't seen nothing yet, that more grace is coming your way, more peace is coming your way, more, more power of God is coming to manifest in your life. I pray for you today that as you step into your destiny, as you step into the place that God has called you to do, to, to, to move into, that things will begin to move in your life in ways that you have never known. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you this morning that God will send destiny helpers to you. I pray for you this morning that the strength of God will lift you up. The grace of God will uphold you. The, the power of God will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today that you will step into the destiny which God has called you to. Praise God forever, forever more. The Bible says, after everything you have has increased or received, everything you receives increases. Verse 14 then says, then your heart, say your heart, then your heart, all right, your heart will become lifted up by self-conceit and arrogance. Wow. And you will forget the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. 
Verse 15 says, He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with his fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. It was he who brought water for you out of the flinty rock. He fed you manna in the wilderness, a substance which your fathers did not know, so that he might humble you by dependence on him and that he might test you to do good things for you at the end. The desire of God is to do good things for them at the end. That's what God desires. And God, that's what God desires for you as well. You know the Bible says in the book of James, or every good gift, every good and perfect gift, Masha Katabosia, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light. In him there is no shadow of turning, neither is there any variableness. If there's anything called good gift, it comes from the Lord. The desire of God has always been to what? To do good for you. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, I think I quoted this last week, says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. The thought of good and not of evil. That's it. If there's anything, if there's anything called good, God has that thought for you. God has that thought for you. God does not desire to do evil. God does not do evil for his children. It is God does not even have evil to give. Praise God. All right. So the desire of God is for you to bring good into your life. Okay. So let's go back here. Verse 17. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. But you shall remember with profound respect the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore solemnly promised to your fathers as it is this day. Praise God. Now, if you go back to that test, the key to the answer, how can we not forget God in the past, is in verse 17. So I go back to it. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. But you shall remember, instead of saying that in your heart, you should do what? You should remember that it is God's grace. It is God who is giving you the power to make wealth. Why did he do that? So that he may confirm his covenant. He may manifest his covenant that he has sworn to the fathers. Under the new covenant, the way to read this text will be, do not forget. Don't say in your heart, it's by my power and by my, and by my might that I have made me this wealth. Don't say that. But you shall remember that it is the grace of God, the power of God at work in you, who has made you wealthy. All right? Why? So that God may manifest the covenant that he has had with Jesus. The covenant that God made, he made with Jesus. In order for that covenant to, to be manifested in your life, God says, trust the grace of God at work in you. Trust that the grace of God is the one who is going to make that to happen for you in the name of Jesus. So when we don't remember, when we start to claim that it is by our effort that these things have, have come to us, we are limiting the influence of God in our lives. When we give glory to ourselves instead of to God, or instead of to the grace of God, or instead of, or instead of the finished work of Jesus Christ in our lives, we are doing what? We are forgetting God. We are forgetting God and we make idols. We, we, we could end up making idols out of the things that God has blessed us with. Let me give you an illustration. Suppose God gives you a dream job. And while you were whilst you were sharing your testimonies, you started saying say things like, Man, I pray for many hours. That's why God moved. Or man, if I had not prepared, that thing would not have worked. The reason why I got that job is because I prepared. I prepared. Man, if you know how much I prepared. When you do that, you are forgetting that God is the one who even bless the effort that you are putting in there. The effort you've put in there is great. The prayers you prayed is great. Right? But don't put emphasis on the blessing instead of the blessor. God is the blessor. And we should praise him when we talk about what he has done for us, not in terms of what we did to take what he has done for us. You see, do you see what I mean? God, by grace, has provided everything we would ever need. But by faith, we lay hold and receive those things. Praise God. All right. So let me share a story with you quickly, my own story. For, four years ago, I got, I got an international job, beautiful job. Got to travel around the world. Well, not all around the world. Travel to over about 10 countries, constantly traveling. It was a good job. But what I want to say this morning really is about the the eve of the eve of going for the interview. <laughs> and then about two o'clock in the morning, I woke up and said, "God, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do?" And God gave me a scripture 
that really really bless me that scripture in the kjv is in book of proverbs proverbs chapter 21 verse 31 in the kjv it says the horses the word the horse is prepared against the day of battle but safety is of the lord essentially that that scripture is saying when the battle is coming up you prepare the horse you get it up the horse up you polish the horse you feed the horse properly you do all the things you are doing it's before that time i used to think about oh you prepare all of these so that you can win the battle you do all this preparation then you can win the battle and please don't get me wrong the preparation is important you know there's a saying that says that uh, success is when preparation meets opportunity right which means you prepare you are preparing yourself you are building yourself up and then at the right time when the opportunity comes because you are preparing yourself it's easy for you to step into what god has planned for you so i am not against preparation you must prepare and that's exactly what god told me that night that night god told me and said what do you think that scripture is saying i said this is what i think he's saying he said no you got it wrong he said what he's saying is you prepare the horses for the day of battle you prepare ahead but as you step into the ring as you step into the battle never forget i am the one who gives you the victory that and that's a totally different way to look at it right the first way to look at it is that i have to do this preparation then i can win god says you do the preparation but never lose sight of the fact that i am the one that gave you the victory that gives you the victory so as i got that inclination from that from that uh, word that god shared with me in the night i began to say okay, so god <laughs> show me a way what do i need to do and god told me that they're going to ask me a particular question i should go and find the information on the internet and i went i couldn't find it i said, I said please god help me how can i get it and as i was searching 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 eventually found the, the method the method that these guys used to deliver their project and basically on the, on the day of the interview when i had the interview i basically just recall back to them the way they work i said this is the way to do stuff and you know what to the glory of god i got a job right now when i when i ran into problem in that job like maybe some issues occur along the way as i was as i was managing the team i always remember god gave me a strategy god gave me this job right so i never say oh it's because i prayed it's because i did this no i always say god gave me this job that is how not to forget the lord Praise God. So what lesson do we learn from here? Lesson number one, don't praise your own effort as a basis of your success in life, but praise the grace of God at work in your life as a basis of your success. Praise God forevermore. So let's step into second, second point. How can we not forget the Lord in the present? This one I'm going to be looking at Psalm 78 verse 11. Psalm 78 verse 11. I'm also going to read Psalm 78 verses 41 to 42. So, the Bible says, they forgot, Psalm 17 verse, Psalm 17 verse 11 says, they forgot his wonderful works and the miracles of the past. Psalm 78 verse 41 to 42 says, again and again, they tempted God and distressed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember the miracles worked by his powerful hand, nor the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. So this scripture is saying, these people, they, 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 they forgot the wonderful works of the Lord. In the present, they forgot what God has done in the past. They forgot. And because they forgot, they also tempted God. How did they tempt God? How did they limit God? It's very important. It says, they did not remember the miracles worked by his powerful hand. And what he has done for them in the past that's how they tempted god that's how they limited god in their lives by not remembering what god has done in the past you know when we forget about the lord and we we we, we don't remember what he has done for us in the past you know what we're we're going to end up doing we're going to complain a lot about the present we're going to complain about this about that about that about that about that, about that and when we complain we cannot praise when we mourn we cannot show gratitude god wants us to show gratitude in the middle of the challenge you have find something simple that you can just be thankful for why as i said earlier the waves of gratitude that you are as you are sending out will bring more of things to be grateful to god for in your life now let me give you make this a bit more practical for us have you ever have you ever been without a job you prayed for it and then after god gave you one you start complaining about the job. You complain all the time. You talk about it. You're always complaining. This actually has happened to me. You know, my wife even recently told me, I said, you know that job that you say you don't like? Stop complaining about it. Because God gave you the job. And I remember the day that God gave me the job. I was kneeling down there and said, God, I don't want to take it. And God said to me, I gave you this job as a gift. So now, 
I, I, I repented. I started telling myself, I love the job. What a wonderful place to work. You see, when you start to confess beautiful things about what you have, you are going to get more doors open to you to get more to be brought into your life. Another example. Let's say you're believing God for a wife or a husband. And I think after God has given you the husband or the wife, you shout at him or her all the time. You're always fighting to quarrel. You're always saying bad things about the person. You treat her like garbage or treat him like garbage. Then you know what you've done? You've forgotten the days when you were lonely, when you had no husband or you had no wife. You've forgotten the days when you prayed to God and said, please God, bless me, give me a wife. Again, this is something that happened to me. You know, for t- Before I met my wife for two years, for two years, I was praying for my wife. I don't know who, who she was. I don't know the policy she's going to have. Just said, God, give me a virtuous woman. That's all I was praying for. And I was praying, I was praying for two years. And the day I saw my wife, I hadn't even spoken to her. When I saw her, I saw her from afar. God said, that is the answer to your prayer. That's the wife you've been praying for. And then as we started in our relationship, and at times, you know, when we first started, I had, you know, had, like I told you last week, I had no parent. So I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do some things in marriage. And God, one day I was sitting in the, um, in the sitting room and God began to school me, literally school me and give me instruction and say, this is how to do it, this is how to do it, this is how to do it. Remember, I give you, I give you, I give her to you as a gift. So I'm still working in progress. I'm not a path, I'm not the I'm not a perfect husband yet, but I'm still working in progress. But as I remember that there was there was a time when I prayed for this wife and God gave me the wife. So I gotta treat her well. I gotta treat her well. So that's how you don't forget the benefits of God. Okay, let me give you another example. Suppose you're believing God for children, all right? And then God gave you these children. And all you do about these children is you just curse them out all the time. You curse them out all the time. You shout at them all the time. You just become a terror in the house. Then you are forgetting about the work of the Lord. You're forgetting that God gave you those children. That there was a time when you didn't have them. That is how not to forget about God. When we complain over God's blessing. When we, 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 we eventually minimize the benefit of that blessing in our lives. So, what has God given you right now? What are you going to do differently based on what we have learned today? Are you going to treat that child well, that wife well? That is what God wants you to do. Praise God. So, spend some time and begin to say, you know what? Father, I thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my car. For example, you, you, you believe God for a new car. But the one he gave you, you just curse it out all the time. It was a, like recently, there was one car that we, we, we have a car that, you know, we, it's like a truck that we, we drive around. And that car, truck, one, of the, one day, sort of stopped walking in the middle of the road near, near the traffic light. You know, instead of cursing the car, you know what I just said? I said, oh, you are a wonderful car. You are a beautiful car. You will take me to where I'm going. Oh, I love you, car. Then the next time I came, the car, the car started, started what? Kicked off and started moving. Now, some of, you, some, some of you might think this is weird, but let me tell you something. Everything responds to word. Every single thing responds to word. You start this week and be, start to bless everything around your house. You will see the, the, the change in the atmosphere. You see the change in the atmosphere. Praise God. So, what's the lesson we learned from here? Lesson two. Complaining limits, complaining limits the flow of God. Or complaints limits the flow of God. When we don't remember the blessings of the past, we get stuck in the present. Listen, what you curse with us, what you bless grows. Remember that Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree in the book of Mark 11, chapter, Mark, Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 20. He cursed the fig tree. He looked at the fig tree. The fig tree suggested that it, it, it has some fruit. Christ, even there, he didn't find fruit. He said, he, and he said, may nobody eat of you ever. The next day when he, when he came back, what happened to the fruit? The fruit withered, died from the ground, ran, ground up. Now, here's the thing. Christ caused the fig tree, the fig tree died. You know, the same word that caused the tree is the same word that will bless and say, rise up from the dead when he rose up, raised Lazarus from the dead. It's the same word. The same word coming, I mean, the, the same mouth is said this, the same mouth said this. So words can cause, words can bless. And it is that what you cause will wither, what you bless will grow. So if you are blessing your wife or blessing your husband or you're blessing your children, they will prosper, they will grow better. If you are cursing them and speaking negatively about them, that's exactly what you're going to get. So, say what the psalmist says. That says, Oh Lord, place a trap over my mouth. If I'm going to speak negative things about my family, about anything around me, place a watch over my lips. Shh, let me keep quiet. Alright, praise God. Okay, the final point I want to talk about here. How can we forget God in the future? 
Psalm 106 verse 13 says, But they quickly forgot his works. They did not patiently wait for his counsel and purpose to be revealed regarding them. In the God's words translation, he says, They quickly forgot what he did. They did not wait for his advice. Question here, how many times have you started with God along the way? Then you start to ignore him. Ignore his advice. You don't listen to his advice. How many times have you done that? I know I've done that many times. And I always come back to the same position. Every single time you don't listen to what God says, you always come back to the same position. So, let's us learn a lesson. When God says don't do something, just don't do it. When you start off with God and you're about to start an enterprise, why don't you go back and say, Daddy, what should I do here? You know, in Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. Submit to him. How do we submit to him? I'll show you in a moment. The Bible here says, when you submit to him, it will make your ways, your path straight. How do we submit to the Lord? By listen, listening to what he has to say, by acting those, those things out. Listen to it and act it out. When we become doers of the word, when we just don't hear the word alone, but we, we do it. So some of the instructions I've been giving you since you've been coming to church, when you start to put those things to use, you are becoming doer, a doer of the word. And when you do the word, when you act on the word, the word will produce results for you. Praise God forevermore. So, question I've got for you. Will you trust God? Will you trust what God says about you? Or what your friends say about you? Will you trust the empty bank account? Or will you trust the word of God declared in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 that says, My God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory? Will you trust the label of poverty that somebody may have placed upon your life? Or will you believe when God says in, in, in 3 John, Chapter 2 that says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Which one will you believe? Will you believe that you are still a sinner when God has declared you to be a righteous one? What will you believe? The choice is really is yours. One thing I will say to you is, please choose the right thing. Choose what God says. Remember, if you believe wrong, you will receive wrong. Jesus Christ says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Praise God forevermore. So, what is the lesson we learn from this text? We must seek God's views and directions before we start any enterprise. We must continually seek His view, even when, even when we continue in that enterprise, even when we continue in the thing He has asked us to do, we must continuously do what? Ask for His advice. So, these are the three things that God laid in my heart to share with you this morning. Number one, do not forget God by claiming that all the blessings in your life you did it by yourself number two do not forget god by complaining when you are in the moment just complain 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 number three do not forget god by not seeking his counsel when you are looking forward to the future praise god forevermore praise god forevermore next week i will continue some i still want to talk, talk about psalm 103 there's there are blessings in psalm 103 that i'm going to be talking about the rest of that text that we started off off now you know we only cover uh, verses 1 to 2 now. I'll cover the rest of it, you know, next week by the, by the grace of God. Praise God forevermore. So, I want us to pray. I want us to pray that, you know, as you step into this week, you will not be a complainer. As you step into this week, you will trust God more with your life. As you step into this week, you will remember the past, what God has brought you, to, brought you through, and he will apologize his name and say the same God that did it in the past, he will do it, he will do it again. I want you to say with me, the God that did it for me in the past will surely do it again. Let's do that again. Again, The God who has done it for me in the past will surely do it again. One, one more time. The God that did it for me in the past will surely do it for me again. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, there's going to be a small video, uh, a small motivational, motivational video after I finish prayer. Please, if you want to wait wait at the end please to listen to it please do this it's about five minutes video i encourage you to listen to it just talking about the power of words all right so that will really bless you let us pray wonderful father i thank you for your children thank you for the ability to be able to remember that there are some things we do that make that may they may make us to seem as if we are forgetting you according to what we've learned today help us to remember you in the past Help us not to forget you in, in our present moment help us not to forget you as you step into the future because you are the god who has gone into our past to, 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 to deny the past the ability to hurt us. You have gone into our future to secure it and you are right now in our present moment. Place your hands upon us to bless us. So 
in the past, in the present, in the future, you are all there for us. Father, we just want to thank you for that, for the privilege we have of knowing you, of being your children. As we go for this week, Lord, we thank you that we will not forget, we will remember the goodness of God. Father, we thank you, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, blessings are ours and grace, your grace multiplies in our lives. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise God forevermore. All right, so if you want to give your life to Jesus, I, Jesus, I'll just uh, lead you in the, in, the, in the prayer of salvation. And then, please, if, if you feel led to uh, give to the ministry, you'll see the link also on the, on, this, on, the, on, the, on the screen. And please, the Lord bless your giving in Jesus' name. If you want to give your life to Jesus, here's what we will do. Just believe in your heart that Christ died for you and died as you on Calvary's hill. And on three, on the third day, God raised him from the dead. And Romans chapter 4, verse 25 says, God, Christ was crucified for the forgiveness of our sins. And he was raised from the dead to prove that we have been made right with God. So if you believe in your heart that Christ died for you and died as you, and on the third day he was raised from the dead as it, to, to show that you have been justified, then you just repeat those words after me. Believe in your heart, repeat after me, and then you are saved. Is that, is that okay? Say, say with me, Father, I thank you that Jesus died in my place on Calvary's hill. And after three days, he was raised from the dead. I believe the death he died, he died for me. And he died as me. Right now, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for having me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you say that, those words, repeat those prayers after me, the Bible says you're not saved and I welcome you into the family of my Father. Praise God forevermore. All right, as we go, remember, you are blessed and highly favored and the Lord who started the good work in you. We finish it. Remember, if he did it in the past, he will do it again. You're blessed and highly favored. I'll speak to you soon. God bless you. Thank you for joining today's service, which was great and awesome as usual. We hope that you were blessed. The replay of today's sermon will be available by 10 a.m. UK time on our social media handles, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at The Lighthouse. You can also subscribe to our podcast channel on www.thelighthouse.org.podcast. You can also listen to other messages. Do not forget that you can reach out for more information on our website at www.thelighthouse.org or you can send a message to light at thelighthouse.org. Our services hold twice a week on Sundays 8 a.m. UK time and on Wednesdays by 6 p.m. UK time. We look forward to you joining us. Do good by inviting someone to church. Till then, stay permanently blessed. Break!
Shine your smile.